Good morning, everyone. Welcome to um, our latest uh, Reflect at 10 time together. It's lovely to be here with you and I hope for the next 10-15 minutes you will find something to speak to where you're at uh, in uh, our continued lockdown situation. Uh, I'm taking my theme today as creation and groaning and I'm basing it on Romans chapter 8 uh, starting at verse 22 if you wanted to open your Bible to be ready. Uh, and I'm also using some prayers from uh, another Celtic uh, book which is called The Rhythm of Life as you can see Celtic Daily Prayer it has prayers for morning midday evening and night in the Celtic tradition I, a couple of weeks ago when I did the last reflection uh, quite a number of you wrote to me saying how much you appreciated hearing some prayers from that tradition so I thought you might bear with me if I do it again today so we're going to start with some prayer then have the Bible reading and a few minutes reflection on it and then end with prayer together as well. So let's pray. To God who created the world, to God the Son who redeemed the world, to the Holy Spirit who sustains the world, be all praise and glory now and forever. And now the next bit, I'd love you to join in with me uh, as we uh, and say these words, awaken us to your glory. So I'll say a phrase and then you join in with awaken us to your glory. Dispel the darkness of night, awaken us to your glory. Destroy our heaviness of heart, awaken us to your glory. Cure the blindness of our sight, Awaken us to your glory. Heal the deafness of our ears. Awaken us to your glory. Open the mouth that is dumb. Awaken us to your glory. Restore a gentleness of touch. Awaken us to your glory. Encourage in us a sense of adventure. Awaken us to your glory. Bring us an awareness of you. Awaken us to your glory. Creator, Father of all, you give us life, you give us love, you give us yourself. Help us to give our lives, our love, ourselves to you. Help us to listen as you speak to us now. Amen. And so our reading from Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So I wonder how many of you are currently feeling really blessed by being in God's creation uh, from uh, lots of things I've seen on Facebook or heard about. I know that many of you are enjoying walks and uh, time out in the fresh air. And uh, I don't know uh, how many of you are, have realised, but Tom and Daniel and myself, we are trying to phone round every single one of you in the church congregation over the period of lockdown uh, to find out how you are and how you're doing. And given that that's 100 phone calls approximately each, it's going to take us a little while. So if you haven't had a call yet, please uh, forgive us and uh, and for, be forbearing. Uh, we will get round to you, uh, I'm sure, in due course. But many of the people I've called have talked about the beauty that is around at this time of year. 
the fresh green leaves, the lovely blossom, the flowers, the sunshine, uh, the lack of rain, um, and how wonderful it is. Do you not think it's almost as if God's saying, you're in such an awful time, but I'm going to bless you with the beauty in the world around you to help you lift your eyes above it and to give you that hour a day exercise or whatever you have uh, to enjoy instead of having to battle through wind and rain. But in these phone calls, as well as people saying those sorts of things, uh, I and we, Tom and Daniel, are also hearing stories of a lot of fear, of anxiety, of loneliness. And Daniel spoke into that a little bit last week when he looked at Psalm 13 as part of our midweek reflections and he was talking about the cries of how long, how long will this go on for? Especially, you know, I went through my mind when we heard that there was at least another three weeks of lockdown and I guess it will be more. And our reading from Romans spoke about how creation groans as if in the pangs of childbirth right up to the present day. Because creation is a process. It wasn't a one-off boom and that was it. It continues to develop and evolve even up to today. And just a tiny sign of that is just to uh, look how uh, the wildlife is sort of moving into the streets of our towns and cities because they're quieter and there are fewer or no people about. Um, do you remember we heard about the wild goats coming off the Great Orm in Llandudno and uh, how they were coming down into the streets of the town and munching the flowers and mooching around and looking through the windows and that sort of thing. And then uh, there were also stories of coyotes, the sort of wild dogs in San Francisco roaming and howling in the streets. Who, who would ever have thought of that happening uh, a couple of months ago? And then more locally, people are telling me, uh, I haven't seen them myself, but I've heard about these deer, the sort of marching around streets of Camberley like they own the place. Uh, and um, right in our own garden, we have definitely noticed that the feral town pigeons, the scruffy ones, have moved out into gardens and they're, they're in our garden bullying our resident wood pigeons and collar doves. So creation is evolving, but it is also groaning. Groaning. This is a time of deep deep pain. The world in the grips of a pandemic, you can kind of almost hear and touch the pain in the world around us. I have never known a time like it. When will it end? No one can say. How many will the virus kill? No one knows. How will we get back to normal? Well, what even will the new normal look like? We don't know. No one's got any answers, have they? Yes, there's predictions, there's guesses, there's hypotheses, there's fake news, but actually we don't know. That awful overused word, unprecedented, says it all, doesn't it? We don't know. But Paul offers us hope, hope as an answer. In verse 24 and 25, he didn't he? He wrote this, for in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. And there, I believe, is the key. Do not lose hope. Wait patiently for what we don't yet see for what we've not yet got. Wait patiently for when this lockdown will be lifted. If, when, you may feel scared or lost or lonely or anxious, can I suggest you just take it a day or an hour or even just a minute at a time. Live in that moment. Try not to overthink it. Take pleasure in the small things, the breeze on your face. If you can't go out, just open a window. Feel the breeze on your face. Or notice the green of the leaves as they unfurl gently. The brightness of the blossom, the blue of the bluebells. The taste of a chocolate brownie. 
the smile of a neighbour over the fence or a socially distancing passerby. And this is the promise that we have. Back to Romans, verse 28 this time, well known, I'm sure, to many of us. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. The promise of hope. This time too will pass. Wait patiently for that hope that we do not yet have. Amen. We're going to uh, turn to prayer now, again from that prayer book, uh, the Celtic Prayer. And we have a response that when I say, Lord, would you like to just respond with, have mercy. Short prayers. Upon all who seek to care for our world, Lord, have mercy. Upon all who seek to conserve and preserve the, the earth's goodness, Lord, have mercy. Upon those who have to make difficult decisions in government, Lord, have mercy. Upon those who work in dark and dangerous places, Lord, have mercy. Upon all those who work in hospitals, surgeries and for the ambulance services, Lord, have mercy. And upon those who are sick or bereaved, Lord, have mercy. And as we conclude now, let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So I leave you with a blessing and the hope that you'll join us together at 10 on Sunday and this time next week for Reflect at 10 on Wednesday. But until then, here's a blessing. God, who made the world, protect you this day. Christ, who redeemed the world, give you peace this day. Holy Spirit, who sustains the world, be with you this day. Amen. And thank you for joining me. God bless you all.